Today, I want to talk about why I think there is so much value in temporarily visiting beautiful places that inspire you, especially those of us that struggle with depression. Depression is a strange thing. The way it morphs from feeling like a thing you suffer with to transforming into something that seems to become you alters the way you view the world and yourself. Becoming depressed is often a process shrouded in confusing blurs of experiences, a mixture of slow creeping onset entangled with sudden collapses of our mental state. But I find that there's always this point where the question of why we became depressed matters less than the question of how do we overcome our depression. However, the painful and elusive nature of trying to find reasons for why we became depressed pales in comparison to the seemingly and often hopeless quest to trying to find any solutions to our depression itself. What do we do? What do we change? How do I overcome this thing that is taking over my life? In the roughly four years, I've struggled with issues like PTSD, major depressive disorder, and intense suicidal ideation, I have found few meaningful answers. Despite drastic changes like going to therapy, quitting hard drugs, starting a YouTube channel sharing my struggles, or literally putting my entire life on pause to work on my mental health. I'm still very much on the hunt for meaningful answers for myself, let alone ones that I could one day share with you all. However, today I want to discuss one of the things I've done consistently that has had a major impact on my drive to keep on trying to find the answer and trying to overcome my depression. That thing is every six months or so I try to visit places that I find inspiring or beautiful. Trips like hiking through the Smoky Mountains and rock climbing in California, or visiting cities I would one day love to live in like LA, Denver, Chicago, or San Francisco. But the question I want to focus on in today's video is why does visiting places that we deem to be beautiful or inspiring fill us with hope? inspiration, or the drive in our fight against depression, or to better our lives in general. What are we really gaining by visiting these places, and how do we best capitalize on these experiences? But to do this, let's go somewhere with a touch of nature for this video. This video topic came to me after my most recent trip to Denver. As I opened up about in one of my recent videos why 2021 almost broke me, from January to May of this year, I had one of my dear friends that was extremely suicidal. And on top of that, in December, I was already slipping back into a deep and dark depression again. The first five or so months of this year were indescribably difficult and push me back to old and dark lows. In June, I had the opportunity to help one of my other best friends move to Denver. I accepted the offer without hesitation. I needed to get away. I needed to remember why I keep going. I needed hope. But what is it about visiting places like Denver that gives me hope? Is it the mountains? The thriving and large city? Is it merely just being figuratively and literally a thousand miles from my troubles? Well, yes and no. It's something much deeper than the natural beauty or the sense of separation from our troubles that is inspirational. But to really understand why these places hold inspiration or hope, we have to understand the way we view the places we are coming from. See, I live in my hometown at the moment, a small city in Indiana called Lafayette. I live in a rundown house my family owns because I can't currently afford rent. And this town and the house hold so many negative memories for me. I literally live in the same house I nearly died in when I overdosed nearly six years ago. This city represents the fallout of a life of setbacks, hardship, and poor choices. A town I can't leave because I can't afford to. And I can't afford to for a wide range of reasons, but the largest being the consequences of my long battle with PTSD, self-sabotage, and depression. So, in a sense, the place I live in, and currently stuck in, 
has grown to embody the way right now I metaphorically reside in a rundown life and how I seem stuck in my depression and inability to consistently better my life. In the years since graduating high school, I temporarily escaped my hometown, lived in places like Florida or the gem of an Indiana city, Bloomington. But the gravity of my troubles brought me hurtling back here last August, and I will be stuck here as long as I keep failing to overcome my issues. Truthfully, I have a deep fear that I may never be able to leave. So in that case, what does places like Denver represent? Well, for me, it represents possibility, a chance for a brief trip to experience what my life could look like. See, growing up in the flat cornfields of northern Indiana in a small Midwest town, I've always felt called to big cities and mountains. There's something strangely magical about a city skyline framed by a mountain range. In my teen years, I would go visit the sprawling and massive city of Chicago marvel at the towering buildings and throngs of people from all over the world. Later, I would travel to places like Seattle, LA, Nashville, and other big cities, along with hiking in the smoky and rocky mountain ranges. In these places, I felt there were so many opportunities for a life simply not possible in my hometown where I grew up. Another aspect of these short trips is our temporary escapism from the immediacy of our problems a chance to leave behind some of the suffering and heartache. But the real magic and importance of these trips is, at least for me, they give me something to aim and work towards. See, one of the biggest issues with depression, or just a shitty life in general, is as the months tick by, you slowly start to believe that this is all your life is meant for, to suffer and to reside in a life you deem to be lesser especially once the environments around you are shaped by your hardships. Like for me, being stuck in my hometown is a product of my trauma and self-sabotaging, which ruined my ability to live anywhere else for the time being. And the truth of the matter is that as our current selves, with all of our brokenness and sabotaging, we are most likely doomed to stay stuck in these lesser states. After all, self-improvement and overcoming hardship is no easy task. Sometimes it is easier to allow yourself to surrender to the misfortune rather than fight what feels like an impossible battle. This is why I try to go on these trips at least one to two times a year, because I find that for me personally, six months is when I start to find myself believing this internal narrative that I'm not meant for anything else. This was such a huge part of my recent trip to Denver. The first six months of this year were brutal. I found myself once again in some sort of suffering that was immeasurable with such intense and dark issues despite literal years worth of trying to better my life. I started to question if my life was ever meant for anything but suffering, questioning if my life was worth living, whether I was ever going to be happy. My depression and self-hatred were trying their best to convince me that suffering was all I was meant for. In these periods, I start to question, why am I even bothering to fight? What's the point? But these trips remind me of what I'm fighting for, a better life. Now, it's not necessarily any one particular place that is important. You can sub in Denver for LA or Madrid or whatever else that is important to you. It doesn't really matter. What I'm really chasing after is not the ability to call a particular city or place home, but more importantly, the ability to move somewhere where I could have a better life, which is about so much more than the ability to afford it. Like with me, my debt and lack of income is more so a product of my depression and self-sabotaging rather than it is about a lack of opportunities. If I ever want to leave Indiana or my hometown, it will require radical changes to me as a person. But those changes seem silly and hopeless when I think about them while still being in Indiana surrounded by the depression itself. Which is why I believe you have to physically go and experience these places. Taking in the sights, the people, and everything else. Embodying yourself in that place of hope. I'm immediately reminded that no matter the cost in terms of emotional hardship or effort, 
it's worth it. It's worth the agonizing days spent working on my PTSD. It's worth facing the shame about my finances. It's worth all the things my depression tries to convince me is meaningless. It's worth trying to overcome my eating disorder, and so on. I deeply believe my life is meant for more than just suffering. But sometimes I lose sight of that. I get overly focused on the immediacy of my depression and what surrounds me and stop hoping, stop trying. These trips allow me to powerfully and intimately find that again. When I'm running along Hollywood Boulevard or hiking literally thousands of feet in the air or exploring new bustling cities, I feel an intense and overwhelming passion to chase after a better and more meaningful life. That's something you can't get from daydreams or pictures, and certainly not when you're thinking about them in your places of hardship. This is why I think visiting places you find to be inspiring or give you a sense of hope is so important. Now, there is one downside to all of this. That flight or drive back to the place you want to escape from after getting such a strong and intimate taste of what your life could be is profoundly painful. Visiting these places not only reminds you of what you want, but also painfully reminds you of all the hard things in your way. How right now, that life isn't possible for the person that you are. This isn't an easy thing to experience. Matter of fact, every single time I've gone on one of these trips, when I get back home, I almost always fall into a short period of depression because I see the challenges of my life with new eyes. The blinders have been stripped away. But I would argue this is, at least in the long term, a good thing. We get desensitized to just how much we dislike our current lives and grow complacent about trying to strive for more. That discomfort you feel is what motivates true change. One last thing one could argue is why not just move to that place that gives you hope? Why not stay? Why not never go back? Well, I have a huge video coming up that tackles that very question, but in short, Remember, it's not about the place itself. For me, Denver is just a pretty city with mountains. What truly matters is the underlying idea and hope that I could one day be a person that overcomes the issues holding me back from being free to leave my hometown and move wherever. My depression, my self-sabotaging, my self-hate. In the most cliched way, the destination here isn't important. What is important is becoming the person that can undergo and successfully navigate the journey there. If you simply just pick up and move, you'll discover nothing has really changed. You are still the same person, just now surrounded by a prettier backdrop. And this future video explores that almost always makes things so much worse. This brings me to a close on today's video. If you are struggling with depression and feelings of hopelessness, I would strongly recommend taking at least one trip a year to somewhere that inspires you. I want to reiterate that the solution to our dissatisfaction with our lives or depression is not moving in of itself. The purpose of this trip is to physically embody yourself and experience what a life on the other side of depression or the things about your life that are lesser might look like. It gives you something worthwhile to work towards, a reason to undertake all that personal development that feels so complicated and impossible. Because when you think about it, escaping places we find to be lesser is really no different than escaping our lesser selves. We have to undergo that difficult internal journey of fundamentally becoming a different and better person. So go hike mountains, get lost in a city, explore ancient ruins, go walk along a breathtaking beach. Whatever it is for you personally, go experience that in the flesh. Go embody, taste, and experience a life worth fighting for. And when you return to your lesser life, try your best not to stuff that discomfort back down and ignore it. Allow it to wash over you and motivate you to finally say, I've had enough. I deeply believe we are all meant for more, meant to be happier and better people. We merely need reminded of that from time to time. And with that said, thank you for your time as always. I hope this video made sense and was helpful highlighting why I think visiting these places is so incredibly important, especially if you reside in a life that you deem to be lesser or struggle with depression. 
you need to go embody something that's worth fighting for so you can cling on to that when you're back in these states of being lesser. So you can remind yourself like, that's what I want and all this work I have to do is worthwhile. But until we see each other again,